Okay, guys, I think I'm going to jump straight into it. Um, for anyone that's going to join late, uh, also they can join anytime they want. Uh, but yeah, hello, everyone. Welcome to the Side Community Call. Uh, today is February 5th, and it's the first call of the year. So whoop, whoop. Um, we didn't have a call in January. So this call, we aim to cover both December and January items too. Um, for, for those that are new to the call, my name's Oliver, aka Dark Thrush in Discord. I'm the Side Foundation's Dev Realm. As always, these calls are recorded and uploaded to YouTube. And the link will be in the announcements channel, so you can play it back at your own pace and share it with others. Cool, so we've got the contents here. So this is the, this month's agenda. Um, we're going to cover some develop, development milestones of our software. Update you on the grants. Um, we also have a special announcement uh, for one of our grantees. Uh, we're going to do a rundown of the events too. We're going to highlight some release content that we have. Uh, display the foundation's baseline growth metrics. Carve into stone our February goals. Answer only handpicked community questions for this month. And lastly, uh, we're going to open up the floor for free fall on the Q&A session. So updates on host D. Uh, so we've tagged version 0 0.3.0 beta which we anticipate will be the official um, version one release late next week. For the late uh, December to January update, um, we had a several quality of life changes. Uh, we introduced storage alerts to better manage space. Uh, we implemented, implemented validation for the network addresses to ensure accuracy. Uh, the web UI now automatically opens on startup, so it's a very streamlined process, which is awesome. Um, we've added webhook endpoints for improving integration capabilities. We've released a migration utility to assist with data transfer. Um, introduced a host config command for enhanced configuration options. And added native support for Prometheus, uh, facilitating better monitoring. Rented D. Uh, the updates for Rentity in December. The focus with Rentity was primarily on bug fixing, uh, with not many user facing features added, um, except for the UI changes. Uh, enhancements were made to what methods are displayed in the UI, and improvements to uploads and downloads were implemented too. A significant number of bugs were addressed. Preparations were undertaken for the version one release. In late December to January updates, uh, we've implemented several policy of life changes to address um, edge case uh, that cause uploads to certain hosts to stall, um, improving reliability. We've optimized our database for queries further, enhancing the responsiveness of the renter. Introduced the ability to filter contracts by contract sets, allowing users to easily identify new contracts. Uh, we've also fixed some bugs related to renewals, ensuring a smoother operation. We've added a Rentity config command to better configure um, your Rentity with adding passwords or the seed. Uh, we've also improved uh, key management within the UI for enhancing security and usability. For WalletD, uh, not many things for WalletD, uh, but back in December, we converted the JSON store to SQLite. Uh, preparing it for upcoming releases uh, for later. Um, in December, uh, to January updates, um, we completed the migration of JSON stores to SQLite, enhancing the data management and performance. So that's nice to have, have it completed. So in terms of grants, uh, we have five completed grants. Uh, so starting off the completed grants, Fabster, uh, this is a web-free platform for e-commerce, video, audio streaming, and social media, and governance uh, for fairer society. Um, post monitoring score, a portal that allows users to register for notifications where, when um, hosting nodes go down. Um, Autify um, is a simple chain management platform that will store their images and product met metadata on site directly. Um, or, or and through Firebase 2. Um, we've got SI data sources for Grafana, which aims to enhance monitoring and observability within the SI ecosystem, providing users with a powerful tool to visualize and analyze key metrics um, from these products. Well, 
the software as well too. Uh, SciShare 2, uh, which was an expansion of services for um, SciShare. So SciShare is an end-to-end -end encrypted file sharing service that uses SciShare decentralized storage network to store files. So yeah. And then we've got a heap, <laughs> a heap of uh, new grants. Um, so we've got Track Your Investments with SciShare. Uh, which is a web app where one can track their daily, weekly, monthly um, profit, profits and losses of investments such as stocks, crypto, mutual funds, ETFs, uh, metals, you, you name it all. We've got HTLC upgrades, atomic swaps, adding HTLC functionality and integration into the atomic DEX protocol of SIA to facilitate atomic swaps. We've got Mintiplex, a secure digital commerce platform using IPFS with entity storage free um, and on chain certification uh, for authenticity. We've got Host Score, uh, replaces uh, SIA stats for host benchmarking, st uh, scoring, and filtering based on criteria. We also got Loom Web 2, creating a solid portal L2. Building the DevOps and launching a community hosting at the end. Technical Video Wiki. This project, uh, this project involves the production of a whiteboard animation series for developers and using um, and users centered on the side blockchain. Um, in this part of the first series, um, the five whiteboard video animations related to the side blockchain will be produced in English. Hopefully, we can do it in more languages too. But step by step, um, Sire Novel, um, they changed their name to Li uh, LitPad, um, and, yeah, and it's an author friendly online platform that enables writers to share their stories and readers to discover a diverse range of affordable and premium serialized friction across different genres. Collect Free, which is our last new grant that we have, um, is a link archiver. Um, a browser plugin that aims to redefine and preservation um, and engagement of digital content within the web free space. So, just going to go back to the completed grants. So, SI data sources for, for Grafana, um, they've graciously, graciously put together a video for us that we can watch together. Um, so, speaking of this grant, uh, I want to say for, uh, special congrats to Jacob from uh, Busted Ware. Um, so he's prepared for us a recording to showcase some dashboards, monitoring tools um, for the Sire network. And I really hope you guys can hear uh, the audio in this. Hello, everyone. My name is Jacob, Jacob and today I'll be showcasing some new monitoring tools for the Sire network. Everything you see presented today is free, open source, and publicly available on the Sire Grafana GitHub page. I'm going to show a quick architecture diagram first, uh, just for some background about how all the components interact with each other. From there, I'll pop over to my web browser where I already have dashboards set up in Grafana for HostD, RenterD, and WalletD. And finally, I'll show the automation tools that you can use to assist you when deploying Prometheus exporters and Grafana dashboards in your environments. Prometheus is an open source data collection tool built for monitoring purposes. And Grafana is an open source dashboarding tool that visualizes data from Prometheus and other data sources. Prometheus is a pool-based monitoring system, meaning that the exporters collect metrics from each target service rather than the services themselves pushing metrics to Prometheus. At the time of this presentation, forks of HostD, RenterD, and WalletD exist, which expose Prometheus endpoints to support these dashboards. There is some refactoring work that needs to be completed to merge into the official SI repositories, but perhaps by the time you're viewing this, refactoring will be complete and available at least outside of the forked host, uh, fork host D repo. Uh, prioritizing host D first, primarily since most of the legwork for the refactor is done there, so it should hopefully be easy to carry over uh, work from the fork into the refactored code base is the idea. So I have a picture of my SIA monitoring setup here. And as you can see, I have an exporter dedicated for each type of service. I could have just as easily run a single Prometheus exporter collecting from all three services, but this is how I 
decided to do mine. Um, the automation tools are flexible enough to help you automatically configure your Prometheus exporters for however you, you plan to deploy uh, SIA in your environments. All right, before I switch over to my web browser, just a quick disclaimer about these dashboards. Some of the panels you might notice don't match what's displayed in the main host DUI or stats from SIA stats. And that's because some panels are using different time windows by default, and for others, those are still to be determined. All right, so let me switch over to my browser here. Here's the first thing you'll see when you pull up the host D dashboard. As you can see, the block height and balance displayed up top, along with the list of transactions and alerts, connected peers, sync or peers, just some pretty high level basic stuff. Um, the rest of the dashboard pretty much just mirrors the normal host D display that you may already be familiar with. Uh, one of the panels I wanted to call out here specifically is this collateral panel, just as an example. Um, I have it set to look back seven days by default, and host e by, uh, host e UI by default is one day. So if I switch this over here to seven days, it starts to look pretty, uh, pretty close. Um, another thing, like with these individual panels, if you switch it, uh, like with the storage reads and writes, if I switch from total to latest here, um, I start to get closer again to the values in the, the Grafana dashboard. So that's it for host D. Um, jumping over here to printer D, first thing you'll see is the network summary. So we got the, the total network utilization. We can see in this time series, the remaining storage, use storage, uh, we got the total number of hosts, the percent of hosts accepting contracts, percent of hosts scanned, and some network prices. And then similarly to Hosty, we got the block height and balance up here top displayed pretty big. This panel is pretty cool. Um, it's basically a distribution of hosts and their block heights. So it might be interesting to see if there is multiple uh, horizontal lines here together. It could indicate some type of fork. Uh, this is probably a good point to call out this filter up here top, at the top. So I have um, one host running in mainnet and run one host running on the Zen testnet. If I had multiple hosts running under the same network, I could also switch between hosts. Um, let's say you wanted to figure out more information about a particular peer's settings. Um, come here to the peer settings section, and then the peer drop down, select a peer, and then you can get more information about their prices, storage use, things like that. Uh, and then there's wallet D. Uh, similarly to renter D and host D, we got the balance and, and block height displayed pretty, pretty big, um, along with the transactions. The transactions panels on each dashboard, I'm working on getting rid of this underflow column. So more to come there and uh, hopefully in the host D refactor that is coming soon by the time you're viewing this. All right, so let's look at the automation tools to, uh, to build this stuff. So I just want to go to the readme, which is from the SciGrafana repo. And the first step, it says to configure the SciGrafana.json file with our host D, renter D, and wallet D hosts. I've already done that and ran the generate config script. And it generates these Prometheus YAML configurations, one for each host D, renter D, wallet D endpoints, and then a combined version of the three. Um, but let's say, for example, I wanted like these local hosts uh, to be a uh, SIA host. All I have to do is come into SciGrafana.json, switch these around to SIA host, rerun the script. And then all those local hosts become become SIA host. All right, so that's pretty cool there. Um, going to skip step three. Already got the uh, Prometheus data sources set up in Grafana for the dashboarding stuff. So uh, before I run the generate dashboard script, though, a uh, quick note about dashboards. Grafana dashboards can be expressed as JSON objects. So that's what I have these files here. Um, these templates uh, are used by the automation tools to format API requests to Grafana for basically creating them or updating them. Um, so just as an example, say you're in uh, the dashboard here and you accidentally move around some panels or you're in a panel editing it and you want to roll back the changes. Uh, like I said, all you have to do to create or update the dashboard is run the script. And then it kind of rolls everything back to the, the templates. And so that's it. 
Thanks everyone for the time. I appreciate it. I uh, hope you all enjoyed this and find this valuable. Looking forward to everyone's feedback. Feel free to reach out to me in Discord or email me and I uh, hope you have a, have a good day. Last one. I um, hope you guys could all hear that, um, but we'll upload the video as well. I think it actually is uploaded on YouTube already. But yeah, thank you so much for putting this together and showcasing your work. Um, it's great to see the visualization of um the grant itself um so yeah like you said he's going to be in discord if anyone want to ask him any questions uh but also there'll be an opportunity for you to ask him any questions at the end of this call um during our q a session so yeah in terms of events um we had a month-long site innovation and integration uh hackathon uh we have a total of 569 participants uh with 38 completed submissions um and we have we've announced our winners for both the development track uh and the content track uh we're currently in the process of rewarding our winners and i would like to say thank you again for everyone who participated uh we're happy to see a colorful range of submissions and we'll be using this hackathon as a learning curve to host more in the future oh let's go back to that um also in terms of upcoming events uh, we will be attending Paris Blockchain Week 2024 this April, between April 8th and April 12th. Uh, we'll have a side booth, which is pretty cool. Um, we'll be hosting a workshop um, that'll be hosted by me, uh, which hopefully will be streamed uh, live for you guys at home. Uh, come check it out, um, as we'll be looking forward to seeing you guys in person. In terms of content, uh, so we've had a lot of blog posts put up, uh, thanks to Murray. Um, so we've got a uh, media streaming for Sire, uh, which introduces um, the Jelly uh, jelly for enhanced media streaming capabilities. Uh, State of Sire, uh, January 2024, and um, just sharing the latest developments and progress within the Sire ecosystem. Uh, we've got the grant program updates as well. We've got Sci S3 integration. We've got the next generation of renting size storage. Um, we've also got the storage contracts and trustless agreements, uh, detailed mechanics and benefits of trustless storage contracts. Um, we've got free uh, Zen testnet guides put up as well, along with a video. Um, and we've got the Sci S3 integration uh, with Duplicati, um, so enhanced S3 integrations with the um, introduction of Duplicati for Sire. So yeah, go check them out on Medium and check them out on YouTube too. A few metrics here too uh, for growth. Um, so we did have a total of eight new grants approved. Um, in Discord, uh, we've got 232 new users, which is great to see. Um, in tw uh, on Twitter, we've had an increase of um, uh, we've had an increase of a thousand um, one thousand and sixty six new users, which is great to see. Our community is growing. Um, looking at engagement, we have a uh, uh, five. Well, we had forty five uh, people in the call um, last time, uh, last community call. Um, obviously, it's a bit less now, but it's good to know uh, that you guys are committed to joining these calls when you can. Uh, we've also got some content published and we had an increase of 1,896 new reads. Uh, Twitter, we've had an increase of 24 new tweets. Impressions has gone up as well uh, by 24K. And also our engagement rate has gone up by 6%, 6 which is really nice to see. Looking at network, uh, so we have an increase of 60 new hosts and a storage usage um, is just over 31%. So looking at our February goals, um, so engineering first, I thought to just split this up into engineering and growth. So um, it's visualized, it's there, you guys can take it in. Uh, so for engineering, we're going to migrate um, Hosty and Wallet D to core consensus. Uh, so this enables us to drop our last dependency on SciD and support the hard fork in new apps. Uh, Linux apps packaging will also make it easier to install and update Hosty, Wallet D, and Rent D on Linux systems uh, that support apps. 
uh, Mac OS a homebrew packaging. This will make it easier also to install HostD, WalletD, RentsD on Mac OS systems with homebrew. Um, release WalletD uh, beta. Uh, so we hope to have a beta release of WalletD ready by the end of February. Uh, this release will have a faster, more stable SQR light store um, exchange mode to enable exchanges for more easily um, support uh, SIO and slightly refreshed API to make integrating with WalletD so much easier. Uh, we've got a desktop app beta too, which is really exciting. Um, the desktop app will make it easier for you to install and update the new SIO apps and much simpler for users too. So looking at community questions, uh, we did hand pick all of these this month. So the first question is, what's the high level plan to increase awareness of SARA and the benefits of decentralized storage? Yeah, so we're gonna ramp up targeting um, advertising efforts for both our main website, our educational material. Our goals is to expand our reach and educate um, a broader audience about SIA and the benefits of decentralized storage. We also focus on improving the SEO practices. This is to ensure we have a high level of visibility in search results, making it easier for potential users to find and learn about SIA. On social media front, uh, we're boosting our presence um, expect to see more regular updates, increasing engagement for our followers, and the creation of interactive spaces where our community can connect. Uh, we're also diversifying um, our approach to content marketing. Beyond traditional uh, blog posts, we are looking to produce in more uh, video tutorials, hosting podcasts, and creating short-form content to appeal to various um, audience preferences. Lastly, we're actively engaging uh, with a wide range of industry, a uh, wide range of range of the industry through events, um, discussion panels, um, specifically targeting sectors within the blockchain, storage, decentralization, and the web, um, just to position SIA at the forefront of these conversations. Next question is: Will Wallet D address high load exchange requirements to help eliminate any potential resistance? Uh, to listing SIO. But yeah, in our ongoing efforts to enhance performance and scalability, uh, we've made substantial progress uh, with Wallet D following the same trajectory of um, improvements we've seen with Host D and Rent D. We've engaged in the detailed discussions with various exchanges, uh, partners uh, to pinpoint the specific challenges um, they face during the integration with SIO. Uh, with Wallet D, uh, we've poised to address and resolve these issues, paving the way for smoother, um, a more efficient um, integration process. Third question that we got in was, are you aware of any Coinbase technical requirements related to wallet architecture? So Coinbase requires blockchains over um, other than uh, BTC or EMV tokens to implement their Rosetta standard to Coinbase. Um, having a clear requirements for a non-BTC um, and a non-EMV token blockchains. Um, they must adopt the Rosetta standard to, uh, um, to be alleged for listing, basically. So Cyber proudly stands on its own um, pioneering of the blockchain to fully implement and support the Rosetta standards, um, demonstrating our commitment to compliance um, and accessibility on leading platforms. When will um, the decentralization, uh, when will a decentralized exchange be available for sale? So we are looking ahead to the later part of the year um, where we're planning a hard fork that sets, um, that's set to introduce um, a HTLC support, um, a, key, a key element of facilitating easier interaction with, with the decentralized exchanges. Um, in anticipation of this, we've already funded a grant or Komodo to integrate SAR into um, the decentralized exchange, um, retirement it right after the hard fork goes live. Um, additionally, we're actively seeking partnerships with um, other decentralized finance platforms to broaden our ecosystem um, in the future. So yeah, that rounds up our questions, our hand big questions. So yeah, last slides. Um, and that just brings us to the end, guys. Um, thank you so much for joining the call. 
Um, I'm now opening the floor for questions. Um, any questions that you have for Jacob too. Um, and once again, thank you very much for watching this month's community call. And remember to follow our socials.